fogged up my glasses, but it's so worth it. I got a throat thing going on. What's happening, my friends? Hope you're doing really well. Thanks for watching, tuning in, coming back, all that stuff. I hope you're doing really well. Um, I've done two videos now. I did one about light or managing light. I did another one about managing detail. This one's about managing color. And if you've seen any of my videos or my photos in the past, whatever, um, I like color. Color is my thing. I just love color. I like saturated images. I like big, bold colors. Um, I don't like them over the top cl clown vomity, as I've talked about before, uh, although sometimes I do. Um, but anyway, I like color a lot. And that's one of the reasons I like Luminar 4 so much is that, um, well, and frankly, all the previous iterations of Luminar as well. I feel like uh, light, detail, and color, which are the three things I kind of think about when I'm editing a photo, Luminar just gives me so much great control over an image in all three of those categories, and especially around color. It just allows you to do so many things. So this is going to be kind of like a highlight reel of some of the different things you can do and the filters that I use for color. It's not going to be an exhaustive tutorial on each filter because some of these filters, and I'm saying filters, not tools. Oh, I can't get that straight. Gah. Uh, anyway. Some of these filters slash tools um, just need a deep dive, and I'm going to get to those. It's just there's so many things to talk about, and so little time to do it. Let's get going. Uh, the first thing that I would ever use for color is the light tool. Effectively, it replaced um, raw develop, but uh, two ways I would use it. First is temperature and tint, right? So you can just make it cooler or change the tint to make it kind of more sunsetty. That's a great thing to do. Um, the other thing is in advanced settings. Down here, there's a tone curve, and the tone curve is super powerful. I need to do a tutorial just around that. I'm not going to get into it here. Suffice it to say, you can get into these different color channels and mess with reds, greens, and blues, right? And just adjust your photo based on um, moving these uh, the curves tool around. So for example, I'll just do that, and you can see what I'm doing here is basically making the highlights more blue. Again, this is not going to be a tutorial around how to use that. The point is light is I would argue probably the most powerful filter or tool that's in Luminar and that's partly because of um, all these things up above the fold but also because of the tone curve down below it. So that's light. Um, second one that actually impacts color is AI Accent. They say it does about 10 or 12 different things and if you look at it the colors are being impacted. Now it's not necessarily increasing saturation but it does seem to impact contrast and when you change contrast it'll emphasize colors a bit. So just keep that in mind that if you're emphasizing colors and then coming back and adding contrast um, your colors may be off from what you expect them to be. So just keep that in mind. AI Accent's a great one. It's not really a color filter but it's something that I think comes into play. Okay, next up, third is color. And color is uh, quite simple and straightforward with some advanced settings. So saturation and vibrance. Saturation basically takes all the colors and cranks them up, whereas vibrance will basically take the non-dominant colors and crank those up. And so I'm, I tend to be careful with the saturation slider and sometimes generous with the vibrance slider, only because um, if you really saturate all the colors, it can really become kind of over the top, kind of cartoonish uh, quickly, whereas if you're dragging in, an increase in vibrance, you're, you're saturating the non-dominant colors, and to me it, it kind of helps give the image a nice little color pop without going over the top. So that's kind of how I think of it. And Remove Color Cast does exactly that. So as you drag that, it would take any kind of unsightly color cast out of your image. One thing I often find is that some images may take on kind of a greenish hue, and in that case, I'll actually go up here to light, and I'll get on the tint and drag that to the right to get away from the green, more towards the magenta, and that tends to offset that fairly well. But every image is different, so just keep that in mind. Uh, down here below the fold, in advanced settings, you have a color channel for each of these uh, dominant color, you know, each of these colors here, and you can adjust hue, saturation, or luminance within those, which is a great way to really customize your image. Very powerful, and um, it's something that I use really in just about every image. Uh, hue shift, uh, as the name implies, it allows you to shift the hue. So you can see I'm getting some really crazy kind of almost infrared and other kind of strange color combinations here. Um, and that's just a way to kind of roll the hue around and experiment with some different things. Not something I really use very much, but powerful nonetheless. Okay, black and white conversion technically is a color slider in that it removes color. So uh, very straightforward, convert to black and white. And then you have luminance and saturation for each of these primary colors here and you could come in and just make adjustments accordingly. So if you wanted to increase or decrease the luminance or saturation of a particular color, 
uh, you could do that. That even includes you could bring back some colors that maybe uh, you, you took out by converting to black and white. So um, black and white's its own thing, but I think of it as a color slider because it is removing color or allowing you possibly to do like selective color and things like that. So it comes into play. Okay, within Landscape Enhancer, you have Golden Hour, which gives a nice golden pop to everything. You can see it kind of just, uh, adds that golden kind of glow uh, across the entire image. I love to use this on like sunset and golden hour type photos and other ones where there's a nice presence of sun and you want to give it a little bit of a pop, I like to do that. And then Foliage Enhancer, as the name implies, um, you can see it's, as I'm dragging that, it's kind of popping the greens here. This was a fall image. I shot this just uh, yesterday. Well, yesterday from when I'm filming this, a few days ago from when you're seeing this. Anyway, um, you can see like the trees and stuff. I mean, they're, they're mostly bare except for some of these things, but the, uh, the foliage enhancer is basically popping that green in there. And so again, something that comes into play from a color point of view. Okay, I'm gonna pop over to the Creative tab and go into Color Styles or LUTs. Now, L LUTs is short for Lookup Table, and it's basically a set of instructions to tell your photo to do something. It's similar to a look or preset, um, but it does have uh, some differences. Now there's a bunch of these LUTs built in, so you just click on Choose LUT, and you can see you have all these different options here. And as you hover over them, I love that it gives you a preview, so you can see that these different LUTs create these different looks on your photos, and that's a nice color look. So let's say I click Palm Springs. You can come in here, choose the amount. It'll default to 30, but as you go up, obviously it's gonna get more intense. Uh, but you can also adjust uh, contrast and saturation. So maybe you want more contrast and more saturation or less saturation, whatever. You have a lot of options there. LUTs were in the Luminar 3, and then separate from LUTs, there was a, a, a thing called cross-processing. These cross-processing options have now been uh, sort of bundled into the LUT filter, and cross-processing, frankly, is something I use all the time. You can see as I hover over them that they uh, make color shifts in your photos as well. Some of these I really like, like Geneva, I like quite a bit. You can see I've already got some of the adjustments here uh, that I had on the previous uh, slider. Let me hit reset uh, and go in here and then show you that again. So there's Geneva at a base level, London, Memphis. You've got all these different ones. Um, I use Seattle quite a bit on like sunset kind of twilight shots because it's got a lot of pink and purple in it. Anyway, these are all basically different color kind of looks, if you will, that you can apply to your photos. Very powerful, very fun, and it gives you a lot of creative options. And sometimes I'll just go through and experiment with them and just think, you know, I've edited this photo. I like it, but I don't know. I just want to do something fun or creative. And I'll go into color styles or LUTs, find something interesting and unique, slap it on the photo, and all of a sudden I've got something completely different, which, uh, which I like. So it's, uh, it's, it's worth experimenting with. Okay, and now onto the Pro tab. Adjustable Gradient does have the ability to do warmth and vibrance at the top or the bottom of the image. Um, and while that does impact color, I'm gonna skip that for this video. So I wanna go into Color Enhancer. This is like the super filter. It's a combination of a number of different tools from Luminar 3, all bundled into this Color Enhancer. And it's in the Pro tab because some of this can get fairly complicated. So Brilliance and Warmth, I think, is fairly straightforward. Brilliance kind of acts a little bit like a saturation and vibrance combo to me. It makes the photo more brilliant, as you can see there. Um, you can also adjust the warmth of the photo by uh, doing that there with, uh, with the warmth slider. So that's a nice way to uh, change the temperature and increase the brilliance or decrease the brilliance, I guess, but I'm generally increasing. Um, color contrast. Okay, color contrast basically, as the name implies, it creates contrast between colors that are on the opposite side of each other from the color wheel. So what that means is um, you can pick a hue. Let's say we pick the blue. There's a you know decent amount of blue in this. And as you drag this over, what it basically does is the color that you select with the hue slider will get lighter, and then the colors that are opposite of it, opposite of it on the color wheel will get darker. So it's creating that contrast between the colors, it's gonna lighten the one you choose. So if I come over here and choose reddish yellow, uh, it get, gets lighter and the other stuff gets a little darker, right? So um, let's try green, see if there's some of that here. Uh, not, not enough to really make a huge difference, but I think the blue is the most um, obvious uh, example for this photo. You can see how the blue has gotten a lot lighter and the other, other colors have gotten darker. So again, um, it can come in really handy depending on the image. I use this kind of sparingly. It doesn't come up a lot, but on the right image, it's super helpful to have. Okay, and then split color warmth basically allows you to enhance the warm or the cool colors. 
So with the warm slider, if you go to the right like that, you can see it's accentuating the warmth, whereas if you go to the left, it's kind of neutralizing it. So that's how that works. And then the cool is just the opposite. If you go to the right, it basically neutralizes the cool, and if you go to the left, it's accentuating it. So again, on the right image, comes in really handy. That is something that I may use on sunsets or blue hour photos as well, twilight kind of stuff. Comes in pretty handy there. Okay, and then down below the fold in advanced settings, you have what used to be a separate filter called color balance. And that's why I said this color enhancer is really, it's a super filter. It's basically four different filters combined in one. I think that's why they stuck it in pro. And my guess is it's also in pro because of color balance. It can be fairly, um, challenging in the beginning to get a hold of it like mentally in terms of how it's working so if you look at it it's got shadows midtones and highlights so it divides those different tones and then within each you have these um, three different sliders that have two colors on them and they're opposite of each other so let me show you a color wheel here it is so if you look this top a slider over here under color balance is called cyan and red well here's cyan and here's red they're opposite of each other on this color wheel same thing for the next one, magenta and green. Here's magenta and there's green. Again, opposite of each other. And lastly, yellow and blue. So here's yellow and there's blue. And so they're opposite of each other on the color wheel. So what this allows you to do is to go into any of the three tonal areas, shadows, midtones, or highlights, and adjust the, according, uh, the colors accordingly. So in the shadows, maybe you wanna make them a little bluer and do something like that. Um, but then maybe you wanna go into the highlights and make them a little bit warmer just to create maybe some kind of unique kind of uh, color toned image, something like that. Here's what I find. Um, I use this tool a lot. I absolutely adore using color balance, but there's no right way to do anything. It totally depends on the image. I'm just kind of hacking here. That's not bad, but that's probably not what I would do. But as you can see, you can get some really interesting color shifts and it gives you a massive amount of control over your photo. And what I recommend doing, if you find it helpful, is just, um, Google, like, uh, go to Google image search and look for color wheel and you'll find something like this. This is just something I found on the web. Um, but that's a good way to keep it, um, in mind when you're editing. And obviously if, uh, if you don't do that, you can just look at the sliders here in color balance. But my point is experiment with this. It's very powerful. It's very fun. I'll probably come back and do a tutorial just around color balance. I really do love it. It gives you massive amount of control over the colors in your image. And that's why I think Color Enhancer is in Pro because of the uh, the color balance. But all of these are, are you know very powerful sliders. It gives you massive amount of control over the colors in your image, and I love it. So I spend a lot of time there. Uh, photo Filter is next. Okay, Photo Filter basically kind of um, acts like if you put a, a colored piece uh, in front of your lens, like some photographers will put like colored gels or whatever. Um, you basically just pick a hue and an amount, and then at a saturation level, and just uh, drag the slider. So. In this case, I might want to make this image kind of blue overall. Let's give it a somber kind of blue tone. Um, you can see that you do that very quickly. I just went over there and uh, took the hue and into the blue, and then it defaults to 100. I might bring the saturation down a little bit, but you can see I very quickly gave it kind of a, a faded, kind of washed out blue look. And so depending on the image, you can use this to kind of accentuate uh, certain styles that you may have. So maybe it's a blue, maybe it's a sunset that's really warm and you want to uh, add some color to that. You could come over here and do something like that as well to give it a little bit of a, a kick of warmth. Um, you can also use it just to create different and unique looks. Um, so, you know, you may not like the green. I don't really like it, but uh, maybe there's a way to come in uh, and use that to, you know, enhance a photo with a certain look or whatever. So, it's a lot of flexibility. It's not something I use a ton, but it's nice to have on the right image. And there's also preserve luminosity, which basically just keeps the exposure level basically the same. Uh, if I uncheck that uh, and I start to drag this, uh, I may, let me get back to blue. It's gonna look a lot better. You can see it, the image is getting darker. Whereas if I hit preserve luminosity, it's gonna keep the, the luminance or exposure levels of my base photo. Okay, and all that's left is split toning, which I absolutely adore. I've talked about it for years. Um, and I use it on so many images, I, I honestly don't even keep track uh, because there's, I use it a lot, let me just say that. So it basically allows you to take the highlights uh, uh, separate from the shadows and pick a color and a saturation level for each one. So again, a lot of creative color control. 
This is actually probably not a very good image for that demonstration, but let me just show you. Um, I'll just take the highlights over to the blue and I'll drag the saturation and you can see all the highlighted parts of the image, which is basically, you know, the reflection in the water as well as, of course, the sky. And they're starting to get a blue hue. And then, you know, what I'll often do is maybe take the shadows and pick a different color. Now, I'm getting kind of a weird two-tone thing here because I've got the saturation level so high, but you can keep that kind of low. You bump up a little bit of those warmer tones in the shadows and the cooler tones in the, uh, in the highlights. And, you know, you kind of go from a base image to an image with a little bit more of a color impact. This is something I use all the time on sunsets and blue hour slash twilight kind of photos. I just love how it gives you control over the highlights and the shadows separately. I find that that just is really, really useful. Uh, there's also an amount slider, so it defaults to 50, but if you increase the amount, it's kind of like an opacity or uh, like a saturation slider. Um, and then balance is basically, uh, it'll take you either more to the shadows. If you go to the left, you can see it's more towards the shadows, or if you go more to the right, it's going more to the highlights color. And so depending on the color, um, I don't use balance a whole lot. Let me put this back here. Um, but it allows you if, you, if you like the look you have, but you haven't quite gotten sold on it, don't hesitate to experiment with the amount slider and the balance slider, because between those two, you may strike a balance, no pun intended, between the highlights and the shadows color and end up with something that you like better. Again, it's just about controlling the colors. Uh, and that's really it. I mean, that's a, I'll call it a high level overview of how I work with color and the filters that I like to use. I'll come back and do some deep dives on some of these because I think they warrant it. Um, and I'll also come back and share some of my uh, top filters that I use for color enhancement and how I use those. So plenty more coming. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Do subscribe if you haven't yet. Hit like, leave a comment, let me know what you're thinking. And don't hesitate to share as well. I do appreciate it. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll see you real soon. Have a great day. Take care and adios.